Hey everyone, hope you're doing all right. In today's video, I'm going to be doing an overview of what my experience has been like doing Elite Code for around two and a half months. So pretty much the entire summer semester since I didn't take any classes at Georgia Tech. And I just wanted to share my experience and what my thoughts are and lesson learned. By the numbers, at this point, I have done 22 easy leak code questions, 43 medium leak code questions, and zero hard questions. The total time spent was 88 hours, and obviously, I don't think that's a ton, but I am pretty happy with that since, you know, I don't want to push myself too hard since it is a summer where I'm supposedly, you know, taking the summer off from school. So I do want to relax and enjoy the free time that I have a little more. I'll kind of give a brief overview of what my experience has been like. Um, the first couple weeks, I couldn't even do the easy questions. I could do maybe half of them. I tried out a medium question after like a week, was nowhere even close to being able to solve it. So I went to easy again. Eventually I graduated to the medium questions and that's where I'm at now. So it took a while to get comfortable with the Python data structures. If you're kind of just using Python for work in like a scientific programming way we're using NumPy and you're probably not using like DEX, default DEX, uh, you know, heap queue, the bisect module, stuff like that. That type of data structure is definitely very useful for these type of like programming interview questions but I just wasn't used to using those and some of the concepts like binary search, um, pretty rusty on recursion, and dynamic programming, that's just stuff that I don't use for work. So at this point, I'm kind of, you know, I think I've brushed off the rust and I'm getting to the point where I can solve most of the medium questions eventually. There are a lot of caveats with that. Um, so I'll kind of get into like where I think my studying has fallen short. So I don't really have a super structured approach to picking questions but I have been using this curated list of top 75 leak code questions list. I skipped the binary questions, but for the most part, I really have been trying to pick out questions from each one of those subject areas. That's kind of the problem, I think. You know, it's very useful to study that way, but a huge part of, you know, problem solving and interviewing is you get asked a random question and being able to figure out what type of question it is is very important. That's a that's kind of a issue that I have um, with picking random questions. Sometimes I'll think it's a dynamic programming question um, when it's really just like a graph traversal problem, stuff like that. Um, so I'm definitely not entirely confident in my ability to solve every medium question, though I definitely think I can probably solve most, most of them brute force and most of them in a way that's better than brute force, but maybe not optimal. Uh, I did try out a couple PRAMP sessions, so if you haven't heard of it, PRAMP is like a free online algorithm slash interview prep tool where you can basically get matched with other people who are also candidates and you basically just practice interviewing each other. I found that to be extremely helpful because you get asked a random question and you also have to practice thinking out loud and solving questions in front of someone. Of course, there are bad experiences because these people are not, you know, interviewers. So sometimes the way people interview is not very good. Like sometimes people will give you the solution too quickly or um, the hints that they give you don't make too much sense. But overall, I found PRAMP to be very useful. And if I had known, I definitely would have used PRAMP earlier. There's also something called interview IO, but that's really expensive, like $100 for a practice interview. So I'm definitely not doing that since I'm not even actively you know, recruiting. Overall, I think this has been a very useful way to spend my summer. It's definitely been more fun and flexible since it's like self-paced as, as opposed to the semesters at Georgia Tech where I have assignments due on this day and this day, I have to watch these lectures by this day. So I've definitely enjoyed it. And I do think it's made me a much, much stronger programmer and it feels great to be more familiar with these concepts. So when I am looking for a new role or switching, switching roles within the same company, I'm pretty confident that I could pass the 
phone screen or on site, though I've, I've, I would prefer to be able to study, of course. Uh, my next steps, so the semester is very close, I think a week away, maybe even less. And I'll have another video about my expectations for the fall 2020, 2021 semester. Uh, since I've now completed 12 of the 30 credit hours for Georgia Tech's online master's. And um, after this semester, I haven't yet decided if I'll take one class or two classes for the fall 2021 semester. But I'll let you guys know as soon as I figure that out. <laughs>